And welcome back to Square Off. Just 23 days till the special primary to fill the seat of Republican Congressman Trent Franks in the West Valley's 8th District. Early voters already have their mail-in ballots. Public and private polls on the Republican side show former state legislator Steve Montenegro is neck and neck with another former legislator, Debbie Lesko, atop the 12-person GOP field. And former Senator and Representative Steve Montenegro joins us this morning. Welcome to Square Off. Thanks, Bram, for having me. You accepted the endorsement of Congressman Trent Franks, your former boss, who was forced out of office by allegations of sexual misconduct, which he did not deny, according to uh, House Speaker Paul Ryan's office. You describe yourself as, quote, a leader of virtue, honor, and integrity. So how could you accept the endorsement of someone who was forced out of office under such a cloud. Yeah, I think um, I don't think he ever admitted to what they're saying he did. Speaker um, Ryan's office said he admitted to it and agreed to resign when Paul Ryan asked him to so, resign. So the, the conversations were about surrogacy. I think everybody that knows Trent knows that um, he and his wife had their children through surrogacy. Um, and, you know, I, I think I wasn't there in DC to see everything that was happening. He but, was your former boss. Yeah, yeah, but again, what uh, what Trent Franks did was he understood that that was a conversation that made some folks uh, of his staff uncomfortable, and he resigned. He did the. It wasn't the, just a conversation. He also tried to convince once another staffer that she loved him, and didn't hire an intern because she wouldn't come to his house for a late night interview. Again, those are things that you're the media, a man of virtue. Those aren't the kinds of things I don't think you would do. Ram, I appreciate that. Look, the reality is that I have my own record as well. I wasn't there in Washington, D.C. to see what happened. I've known Trent Franks for 15 years, and he's been a stellar congressman of the West Valley. And so the issues that he said he would represent and do in Washington, D.C., he has. And so when he calls me to step up, we've been here in uh, Arizona for nine years now, serving in the legislature, doing what we told the voters we would do for nine years. I have the most conservative voting record of anybody on, in this race running. So, you know, we, we also have to consider our voting records and what the people elected us to do and what we've done. Okay, well. but again, you make a, an issue of your integrity uh, and just given the sexual harassment issue at the Capitol and what we're just talking about with uh, Trent Franks, I have to ask you, so can you tell CD8 voters you've treated all people at the Capitol, staff, lobbyists, and members with respect and never engaged in any improper relationships with any of them? Of course I can. And look, this is something that, of this is a serious issue. And growing up in my life, I've always treated people with respect. Harassment is never okay. Um, bullying is never okay. And so we want to continue to, to stand with respect, to treat everybody with respect, and to represent the district well. Let's talk about immigration. It's become a big issue uh, again this year, every two years. You oppose amnesty. Yeah. That's your position. So do you oppose President Trump's plan to give citizenship to almost 2 million undocumented immigrants? Look, as an immigrant myself, my, fa my family came legally when I was five years old. And so I do take a strong stance against illegal immigration. Um, what the president is, is saying is that he wants to see change the end of chain migration. He wants to see the end of the visa lottery. He wants to see uh, E-Verify strengthened. And he wants to make sure that we are building a wall, which is, I, I voted to build a wall uh, here in Arizona. I voted for that as well to fund that. So I do believe that amnesty is not the answer. If we have amnesty, no one in the world, no other country in the world will respect American immigration laws again. So I, I, I take American citizenship very seriously. It is the responsibility to maintain the free world and the Constitution and what makes this country so great. So I, I do not support amnesty. So the, that, and that part of the president's plan, many have called it amnesty and sounds like you would agree with that. Look, I want to go and support the president. I want, I think he's Can doing you a great job. Can you support that part of the plan? Yeah, and I, I want to make sure I take a look at it. But again, I'm telling you, I do not support amnesty. Uh, what about existing DACA recipients? Big fight in Washington over that right now. Should they lose their protection from deportation on March 5th when those uh, program expires? DACA is unconstitutional. Since 2011, when President Barack Obama, uh, through edict, as if he were a king, signed an executive order, made a law that it was unconstitutional. Back then I said DACA was unconstitutional and it was a slap in the face to every American and every legal immigrant that came to this country. So I believe that DACA is unconstitutional now. And we have laws that dictate what happens to somebody that's here not legal. So what should happen to those dreamers on March 5th? Look, if you're, there's laws in the country 
that dictate what happens to you if you're here illegally. So they you expose them to deportation. That's what the laws of this country say. And if we're going to be a country that follows the rule of law, we can't pick what laws we're going to obey and what laws we're not. Uh, an issue in your past regarding immigration, you recommended a pardon two years ago for an undocumented immigrant who crossed back into, into the U.S. after two drug-related convictions. What I, How could you support that? When I became a minister at the age of 19, at the same time, a minister, he became a minister as well, a deacon and a minister. And for years, I served as a, a president of the MOP, which means a, a minister for a youth pastor statewide. He always volunteered. And so what he came is he asked me to be a, a character witness for a pardon from the state, not immigration status. He can't even go before immigration unless he is pardoned. He got caught with marijuana when he was 17 years old and paraphernalia. So he had two me, convictions and just... He three pleaded, years, four years yes, apart. I was asked to be a character witness for him be, as a youth pastor, as a minister throughout all those years. And that's what I did as an individual. <clears throat> did you know of these convictions? I didn't know that he was... Um, the depth of what he was, what I knew is... Did you know about these convictions? Brian, let me answer the question, and please. It's a, it's a yes or okay. no question. The, quest, the answer is I served as a character witness for somebody in the youth ministry capacity, okay? It's a yes or no question. Did you know of these convictions? When he came after, he told me, yeah. I, my, my whole point, not serving with him, I was a youth pastor. He was a youth minister. We volunteered together. And so I, I served as a, youth, as a uh, character witness of that. Really interesting issue bubbling up in this, in this race involving the Electoral College and the popular vote. You now describe yourself as a defender of the Electoral College. I always have been a defender of the Electoral in College. In 2016, you voted for and were a prime sponsor on a bill in support of the popular vote. See, Bramman, this is what people need to understand. Before they talk about bills, they need to read them. They're, the bill is 888 words long, and it never mentions the Electoral College. What it does is, it, according to Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution, it is a, an exercise of authority in state sovereignty. State sovereignty, but the result would have been to do away with the Electoral College. No, nope, that's incorrect. The text of the bill says, if the Electoral College is abolished, this bill is no longer effective. If, what does that tell you about you the bill? If you read the bill, I read Graham, it. It's right here. It never mentions the Electoral College, my friend. It's right. The text of the bill, the summary of the does bill. Does it ever mention the Electoral College? Yeah. No, it does not. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it says the Electoral College would be banished. That's not correct. I mean... <laughs> That's not correct, my friend. It's right there. It's on the text. Right there. It's not, Bram. Come on. It never mentions the Electoral College in the bill. But the point is, you voted for this bill. The result of this bill, if it had become, it would, if it had become law and law in other states, would have been to give big states, blue states... That's incorrect. ...more power, larger states. That's incorrect. States, again, once again, more, this is the fallacy... More clout versus smaller states that's like incorrect, Arizona. That's incorrect. That's very correct. So what it is, no. What it is, is this is an exercise in state sovereignty. Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution gives the state the power to decide how to appropriate its electors. And this was a compact that never mentions, this bill never mentions the Electoral College. It does not abolish the Electoral College and it is constitutional. That's what people try to say and they should read the bills before they actually speak about them. Okay, I'll just stand with this uh, since you're saying it doesn't say it. Uh, line 12 of the bill summary says, terminates this agreement if the Electoral College is abolished. And we are, and it's not voting to abolish the Electoral College. But it, what it says is if the Electoral College goes away, you don't need this because you have a popular vote. No, sir. What okay. we are voting for is okay. we're voting for state sovereignty and exercise of state sovereignty. Okay. Steve Montenegro, thanks very much for joining us. Good luck in the election. Thanks, man. Absolutely. When we come back, a Navajo lawmaker wants to abolish the names, do away with the names of some sports teams at Arizona stadiums. Stay with us.